This is Linux Mint 18.1. It's basically just an update of Linux Mint 18, which is still based on Ubuntu 16.04, but there have been some new features added, and if you want to see what they are, I suggest going to the welcome screen here and clicking on new features. There are a lot of them. Some of them are rather minor, uh, but uh, you can find them all here. Now, this is the cinnamon version. The reason I'm trying this out is that uh, since it's still based on Ubuntu 16.04, I wanted to see if they fix some of the problems with Ubuntu 16.04. One that they did not fix was the network manager. Now, I'm using a wired connection right now, but I tried during installation to get it to work with the wireless connection. And again, the Network Manager applet didn't work. However, as before, I was able to get it to work by clicking on Network Connections. And then clicking on Edit. and then clicking on Wi-Fi security and going through that. I'm not going to repeat that here though because I'm using a wired connection. Now, as before, I downloaded and installed Simple Screen Recorder with a PPA. That's the only way to do it in Ubuntu and Linux Mint, but it works fine and Simple Screen Recorder works perfectly. Under apps here, you get Mint install. Uh, I'm not going to use it. I like the Synaptic Package Manager, but this does work. Under drivers, I don't have too many proprietary drivers. As a matter of fact, I only have one that I'm aware of. And that's this Intel microcode processor microcode firmware for Intel CPUs. Apply changes. Oh, I need to restart the computer, but I'm not going to do that now. Do that later. Uh, as I said, this is the Cinnamon desktop, and you'll notice one thing with the menu, they got rid of that little pointer that used to take up space pointing to the Linux Mint symbol, or the menu. That's gone, and this just sits on the bottom now. Let me right click on the background here. Go to change desktop background. Uh, don't look under Linux Mint, there's not much there. You can look under Sarah or Serena and you'll get quite a few more. 
Serena is 18.1. Sarah was 18. A lot of nice ones here. I'll try this one, Romania. That's nice. Now under desktop settings, I'm going to get rid of some of these icons. Get rid of all of the icons. Now you can move this panel around, modify panel, move panel. It used to be that you could move it to the top. Now you can move it to the top or you can move it to either side. I'm going to move it to the top even though I have always been able to do that. I'm going to add another panel. I'm going to have that at the bottom. Add applets to the panel. Now I've been able to add the window list to the second panel, uh, something I've had trouble doing in the past, so this is definitely an improvement. I'm going to remove the window list here. Now I have it down here and I don't need it up here, so. That's a definite improvement over previous versions of Cinnamon. Now, another thing that didn't work with 18, although there was a fix for it, uh, was GNOME boxes. I'm going to try installing that again. I'm going to Synaptic Package Manager. Enter my password. Market for installation. Now click on apply.
how GNOME Boxes is installed, uh, let me borrow an ISO for my internal drive. I'll try the MX-16 ISO just for fun. Oops. Let me do this file, new window. It's a nice noise. I'm going to put it under downloads. Copy, edit, paste. Takes a while since this is 1.2 gigabytes. So let me try GNOME boxes. Click on new and select a, select a file. Downloads open. Now it says box setup failed. This happened before. I've heard about a fix for this, so I'm going to try the fix and see what happens. First of all, I'm going to exit boxes. I'm going to interrupt this video just a second. Now there is a fix for this. I didn't know about it at the time I did my initial review of Linux Mint 18. But I learned about it later. And that is you have to install QEMU to get boxes to work with Linux Mint. That's a fast processor emulator. Now just why the installer didn't say there's a missing dependency or why they didn't just include QEMU when you installed GNOME boxes, I don't know. Or why it should be different in Linux Mint than it is in Ubuntu on which Linux Mint is based, I don't know. But this is supposed to be the fix.
Now that that's installed, let's try boxes again. Select a file. Open. Ah, oh, now it's working. Let's try it. Now it's working. So that's the solution. And that would work with Linux Mint 18 as well as 18.1. So here we are in uh, MX-16. I'm not going to go any further with this. I just wanted to see if boxes would work, and it does. The second panel can now be made to show the window list, and I can configure it further, I just haven't bothered to do it. There's a calculator. There's LibreOffice. So the window list is down here and I have plenty of space up here for other things. That's what I like. Does that resemble GNOME 2 or Mate? Yes, <laughs> but that's what I like. Now the only thing I don't like is this little blur here. Okay, here's how to get rid of that little blur under the top bar. Go to Menu, go to System Settings, Go to Themes, where it says Linux Mint, change that to Cinnamon, and the little blur is gone. Good riddance. Menu looks a little bit different, but I don't care about that. Now, when you use the Update Manager for the first time, you're going to get a choice here. Don't break my computer. Only select updates which are known to be safe. It's set now on Optimized Stability and Security. It only selects updates which are known to be safe or which do not impact critical parts of the operating system but also show me security and kernel updates. Or always update everything, and that's what would happen in Ubuntu, 
recommended for experienced users. Select all available updates. Keep my computer fully up to date. If a regression breaks something, I'll fix it. Well, that sounds pretty scary, but that's what happens in Ubuntu. And frankly, I've never had a problem with a regression breaking anything in Ubuntu. So I'm going to select that and click on OK. Now it's going to start the update process. There aren't too many updates. Do you want to switch to a local mirror? Uh, OK, let me see what happens there. Please enter your password. This is the software sources utility, and you can see that you can select them by speed. It pings the mirrors to see which ones are faster. Actually, the operating system can do this if you know how to do it from your terminal. But if you don't, this will do it for you. Actually, I'm not going to change anything here. What I found in the past is some of these faster mirrors do not actually work. But I notice here the Ubuntu base is based in Great Britain. And I think I'm going to select one in the United States since that's where I am. Actually, I've had trouble with that top one on here, so I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use this one. Click on Apply. Now I'm going to update the cache. Download package information. It's downloading it. 1176 kilobytes per second, actually 1259 now, that's pretty good. Now I'm going to close that and get on with the updates, install updates. Now I'm not going to make you sit through this whole process, so I'm going to pause the video. But note that it's downloading at 1263 kilobytes per second. That's pretty good. So my system is up to date. I've already dealt with the mirror issue. So my only real gripe here is that uh, Linux Mint 18.1 is still using the buggy version of the 
network manager and since this flaw has been known and commented on for some time and many other distributions have changed to a newer version of the network manager I would think that the Linux Mint people could have at least addressed that problem. This is XRAM Tech. Thanks for watching.